Hello, Idaho, and welcome back to part two of our STEM Matters virtual celebration discussion with our Legislative STEM Caucus leadership. And for this part two, I am once again joined by STEM Action Center Interim Director, Dr. Caitlin McGuire. Welcome, Caitlin. Hello, thanks. And we are joined by Senator Dave Lent. Thank you, Senator, for joining us today. You're welcome. It's good to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Senator Lent. Um, to kick things off, can you just share with us a little bit about your background and your current role? Sure. Uh, I have kind of a unique background as far as uh, legislation goes. Um, spent 12 years, well, uh, from an education point of view, um, I spent uh, oh, probably 20-something uh, years. Hey, can we start over again? Can you start this? We are live. <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, three things I'm trying to think of at the same time. So as far as my background goes, uh, I spent 12 years on the Idaho Falls School Board as a, a board member. Um, I worked for about 40 years in the nuclear industry, and uh, 20 of that was a director of training at nuclear facilities. So you add those two interesting things together, and it, it, it brings a really unique perspective to um, Oh, I, I think how I approach education and what the needs in business and industry are. And I've also, I'm also on a uh, committee in the region, Southeastern Idaho region, Economic Development Committee, that's a, a nuclear consortium. It's a task force. And I'm co-chairing with the director of training at the Idaho National Laboratory. And we're working on workforce development, uh, workforce pipeline, uh, partnering with our uh, institutions, College of Eastern Idaho, ISU, and U of I and BYU-Idaho in uh, doing some analysis to determine what jobs are needed uh, in the area. And we did some really interesting things, perhaps we'll get a chance to talk to about some projecting uh, future needs as far as education goes and minimum education requirements at the National Laboratory. So that's a whole big bunch right there and I'll just throw it in there. Yeah, that is absolutely just so interesting to me at the unique perspective that you bring both from an education background, but also as a working STEM professional and sort of molding those roles, uh, not just in your work as a senator, but in economic development in your region. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what has stood out to you so far in some of that work? Uh, in economic development or in the legislature? <laughs> Let's start with economic development. Uh, what's really interesting is the development of technology. So here, here's here's something that might be interesting to folks. Uh, I was a training manager since, since about uh, 2000. And in that period of time, uh, some really interesting things happened in our society. Uh, and this really, uh, really, I think, accentuates the reason why we need to be thinking about STEM. Um, so we, in about the 2000s, uh, and if you back it up to about the 90s or the 80s even, is when computers really kind of came out into the workforce. Uh, the first time I had a computer on my desk in the 80s. In the 90s, we got into other things like the internet. And in the 2000s, then we jumped into smartphones and that technology just accelerated everything. Mm -hmm. so what's happened is, and I, I got to see this firsthand, we had processes that had operated for 20 years, but as technology came in and integrated into those processes, our workforce began to be confused and somewhat troubled with processes that they had used for 20 years. And they would say, well, it doesn't work, it's broken, I don't understand. And the reason was is because the accelerated rate at which technology was coming into the workforce and literally touching almost every job. So we began to rethink our process of education and training and uh, including that update. If you have that mindset that really the world has changed and we have people who came into the workforce, uh, you know, 30 or 40 years before that, when uh, this was back in the 60s, perhaps maybe early 70s, and uh, the world was a different place. So as it accelerated, uh, we really started thinking in terms of how can we help our workforce update? At the same time, you have this dilemma of uh, a, a digital generation essentially coming into the workforce and just picking up and running with everything. So uh, we're living in a time, at least this last 20 years, 
has been so interesting in the workforce, but it really brings home. And I guess I, you know, if you say, why am I interested in this? You know, from my perspective as a nuclear facility training manager, and I also chaired for the Department of Energy, my peer group across the whole country. So that's all of the Department of Energy uh, facilities. We saw this come into play. So I think uh, as we as we talk about STEM, uh, we can't emphasize enough uh, the need to integrate STEM clear back into elementary school and have that integrated all the way through junior high and high school. And as we talk about rethinking education, it has to be done in that manner. Uh, one of the interesting things about education is the current models that most of us use or grew up in were really developed a hundred years ago. And I was thinking back, my grandfather, uh, you know, we talk about riding to school on a horse. Yeah, he was kind of in that, you know, time frame. And only about nine or ten percent of the of the students or the youth in that generation, this is early 1900s, um, really graduated from high school. In my father's generation, you know, it was like uh, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent started really getting be become the norm. But the problem that has really happened in education is that our society has outpaced the uh, rate of evolution in our educational process. So we're still educating to a culture that was really in a model that was designed 100 years ago. So when we start talking about things that really get people excited, when we start talking about, well, let's rethink, uh, let's rethink graduation requirements. Let's rethink the way we uh, structure high school. Since we know that only about 25 to 30 percent of our students were, will ever graduate from college. Well, now it's a little higher than that, but it was that. So essentially in the population now you have about 40 percent of the population that has college degrees. And you realize that, you know, most of our population, the, the last thing they get is a high school diploma, you know, up 60 percent. So what are we doing in those K-12 years to prepare them to really give them a good chance in our society to help them be self-reliant mm -hmm. and to contribute back? So we're really there's a lot of really interesting things happening in that K-12 mix right now. Yeah, and it sounds like something that you're touching on is connecting those core STEM education skills, not just the technical components of specific STEM fields, but these 21st century skills that STEM also teaches, creative problem solving, digital literacy, digital citizenship. These are all becoming and evolving to become more core components of the workforce. Yeah, they really are. And I was listening to a uh, podcast the other day and they were talking about specialization versus mm -hmm. generalization and the need for both. So in the workforce, we need that generalization. You need a good understanding of that whole spectrum of STEM. You know, we've heard this before about the jobs don't even exist today that we're, you know, but that's so true. Yeah. That's so yeah. And it's that ability to see the holistic approach, the whole picture and have an understanding of the technology uh, that's involved. So bringing it back to some initiatives here in Idaho, uh, what are some of the programs or directions that you've seen uh, education and workforce development taking lately in STEM? So what I see happening is uh, really this, there's a movement afoot. And this is, it's, it's kind of interesting. I describe it this way as business and industry had set at the table for years. Of, of these uh, advisory councils and meetings, the time has come that business and industry need to be conducting the meeting. We need to switch those roles around so that the uh, knowledge, skills, and abilities that are really needed in the workforce today are being communicated back through the system to the educational providers. And there's a number of things going on right now in the state. The Chamber of Commerce uh, have a, a pipeline workforce development process in place where they really go out and educate the community leaders as to how to speak the language of education and then approach the providers to help. And honestly, most providers are all over this. You know, they, they want to know, tell us what we need to do to help our students be successful. Uh, and so it's a really an interesting dynamic that's shifting and we've had that, and I'm not saying that we haven't had that, but it's it has renewed energy right now. Um, 
the uh, at the government level and a lot of the uh, business and industry organizations have really grabbed onto that and run with it. I couldn't agree more. It's great to see industry come to the table, not just monetarily, but really wanting to be involved in the programming and reaching out to educators, which is fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, with all of the work that's going on with STEM, what is your hope for Idaho's economic um, prosperity and how do you see STEM fitting into that? Well, it's, it's a pretty known fact that you have to have the educated workforce to attract business and for growth. And that, that there's two parts of that. One is you attract because you have a prepared workforce. But the other thing is you serve the constituents in your state. You provide them with an education that helps them, again, be self-reliant and, uh, and pursue the kind of life and lifestyles that they want, um, that we all would like, the ability to have some uh, disposable income and do some things. So, you know, when we talk about STEM, uh, and, and there's some really interesting numbers related to high school graduation rates and CTE, as a matter of fact, you know, the higher rates there. So what, what we really see is the more we can involve students in getting them engaged in their interest, helping them explore their interests, the more uh, likely they are to uh, continue on strongly in their education and pursue those things which will bring them success. Awesome. And we are so excited to continue to partner with you, with Representative DeMordon, and with others to find new and innovative ways and create new partnerships throughout the state so that we can provide this option, STEM as an option for people to build their future on. So thank you for your continued support. And, and I would just add that STEM, and, and not to go back on your words, but it needs to not be an option. It needs to be part of the real mix. And if we can get to the point where we're not thinking of it as something that you choose, but rather it's part of our culture, because the technology in our society and the evolution of that, it's not going away. It touches every one of us every day. So I appreciate your comment. And I appreciate yours. That's why you are uh, in elected leadership and I'm here supporting the work that you do to guide us forward. <laughs> nice to hear. We don't always hear it that way. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for joining us, Senator. We appreciate your time with us and your continued support of STEM education. And we look forward to working with you more. So thanks again for joining us. Yeah, and thank you. And there's just nothing I enjoy more than seeing a classroom of students that are just engaged and the teacher facilitating learning as we change that model to facilitators of learning. That's just fantastic. That's the magic sauce. Couldn't agree more. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Senator. Okay. Awesome. And thank you, Dr. McGuire, for joining us once again in this part two of our virtual STEM Matter celebration discussion with our STEM caucus leadership in the Idaho State Legislature. Yes, I was so glad we could uh, get Senator Lynn on and hear from him and continue the conversation. And thanks to everybody who's tuning in. We appreciate it. Awesome. Keep tuning in throughout the week for our virtual STEM Matters celebration, and we will catch you next time.